All right, hello once again, Jeff Scott of Rankin Technical College. Coming back with the last four presentations, the last video with the last four presentations of the 32 different items that were in our Quackit.com Bootstrap 4 tutorial. So in this particular video, I'm going to do two things. First, I'm going to go over Bootstrap 4 tooltips, Bootstrap 4 popovers, Bootstrap 4 scroll spy, and Bootstrap 4 templates. I'm going to follow that by going over this explanation of Bootstrap 3 versus Bootstrap 4. That'll be it for this presentation. Then I'm also going to do another series of presentations where I go through some of these examples. There probably are upwards of 100 examples. There's, I don't have the time nor the inclination to go through all of them. So I will kind of pick and choose myself, rather subjectively, I guess, over what I want to go over. So coming back here, let's start with tooltips. Add a stylized tooltip with the Bootstrap tooltip functionality. Bootstrap provides tooltip functionality that allows you to create a stylized tooltip that gets applied when the user hovers over an item. The text comes from the title attribute. Typically, they're used with buttons or hyperlinks, but they can be used literally for everything. Notice here is where, when we talked about having to add Tether before, we use the Tether third-party library so we can position things above, below, to the left, or to the right. All right? So we need to ensure that we're calling the tether.min.js file on our page. We've already included it, as it says, so we should have that up in our list, I guess down at the bottom. Oh, we don't have it. I thought we did. Well, this is the first time we're going to need that. So remember, it should go after jQuery, but before the JS or the bootstrap min JS. Let's see if we have it. We do not. All right. So let's come in here and we'll use this. We'll say tether.js download. Remember, we have our choice of either, either downloading it or we can use the CDN. All right, but we've been downloading the other one, so we might as well download this too. Usage, attachment, strains. Someplace over here, there should be a download. Download the zip. Here it comes. Let's unzip it. Don't need this any longer. source there's tether.js so let's copy this we'll put it here and we'll remove the rest of this okay there we go hopefully that was enough we're going to find out very quickly and I'm just going to do this And this will now be tether.js. I don't believe we did the tether.min, which may or may not have been in there. I've, I've removed it, so I can't tell you now. But we've got tether.js. So we now should have everything in there. So ideally, at least, all the stuff that we've been working with will now run. All right. Bootstrap tooltips are not enabled by default. They require initialization before you can use them. One way to do this is to place the following code somewhere after the call to jQuery. We can, although many books will tell you that this is bad process, we can put it right in here in our HTML file, or again, we could put it in there. Okay. 
I don't know if we do or not. You can see an example of this by opening the above example in the scratch pad editor and scrolling. I'm not going to do that. All right, so here's a basic example. See that? We'll know whether or not this works pretty quickly because if we try to do it and we don't get the tooltip, something is host, for lack of better words. So let's come back into here. We just did, let's let's keep our carousel. I kind of like that. So let's let's get rid of the buttons. We've had those out here for a long time. And now they're gone. And we're replacing them with this tooltip. All right, so I want to break this up so you can see what's going on here. So there's the text. It says, check out my, and we're telling us to open it up in a new window. And there's its opening up the grid tutorial. The toggle will be a tooltip. The placement will be on top. And the title will be Build Advanced Layouts Easily with CSS. And you can see it'll have some stuff in there for the hyperlink, etc. So, a lot of work here. Let's see whether or not it actually works. Check out my grid tutorial, and it's not working. Well, it says Build Advanced Stuff, and it says Build them in there. So you can, whoop, so you can see the linking is working. That worked. Right, just like it works there. Oh, it's an example in a full page editor. So let's just because I want this stuff to work and look as it looks in the book, I'm going to literally use their example here. All right, and I'm going to. We'll call this, we've got an index, let's call this index to two dot HTML. All right. So there you can see it. Pull this up a bit. Okay. And we can also link, link to it. Now, this has removed all the other stuff that I had before, so it's not going to look nearly as nice. I do want to mention to you also, just so you see this, notice when we did this, we had, uh, where was our tooltip stuff? Again, let me hit, throw this over a few lines so you can see it a little better. All right. We said here the placement was on the top. I think we can also do bottom. And let's change the title. We'll just say CSS layouts. Make it simpler. All right. Same thing we had before. Notice now it's on the bottom and it says CSS layouts. Probably would have been better to see CSS layout tutorial. Quack it, CSS layout tutorial. The problem is, or can be, when you do too much of this, it gets so big that that kind of obscures what you're trying to do. And also, just to be, be complete, I think we can do left and we can do right here too. It might be left side like it says here, but I don't think so. There it is. Let's see, it actually goes off the page. And just for completeness sake, we can also do right. Okay, so now you've seen all those. You can do the same thing on buttons as you do on hyperlinks, so I'm not gonna run through those. I gave you the top, bottom, left, and right, so we've looked at all those. There is a top, there is a right, there's a bottom, there's a left, okay? So, again, that brings us to the end of tooltips. So let's jump right into popovers. Popovers, as, mentions, as mentioned here rather, displays small overlay content. It says similar to that which is found on Apple. 
They rely also on tether. Popovers are not enabled by default. When I grabbed that code before, we enabled both tooltips and popovers. All right. So let me get rid of the stuff that we put in here. This was the stuff that we just added for That was the stuff that we just added for um, tooltips, but now we'll be doing some popover stuff. Okay, so here's a basic popover. Again, use the data toggle equal popover to specify the popover and the content to provide the associated content. Now this will be a button rather than using and, and demonstrating it on there. Let's try to put it into our own page. You'll notice that it's of type button classes button and button primary which means it should be blue the toggle is pop over the content pop over content and it's got a little bit of styling here too okay remember click me is always a bad thing to say on this stuff but it's fine for what we're doing here okay and if you say it looks very much like a tooltip it does the difference is most of the time tooltips are equated with for example a lot of people will put tooltips on form elements and if you mouse over them you know you'll typically get your content but here popovers are literally designed to be clicked or whatever to turn them on or to turn them off Again, you can position it just as we looked at. Okay, to the right, to the bottom, to the top, and to the left. The title, as it says, any title attribute you provide will become the title of the popover. There's the title. By default, popovers will close when the user clicks the element again. In other words, you click to turn it on, so to speak. You click to turn it off, so to speak. You can make a popover close whenever the user clicks anywhere within the document by saying data trigger equal focus. So now notice that turned it on, but if I click anywhere, I don't have to click the button to turn it off. In fact, I should click anywhere outside of the button, even on the text itself. You can change it so popovers work on hover with data trigger equal hover. That's kind of a nice one. That's one that you might want to be able to take advantage of. It's not so, for lack of better words, it's not so intrusive to use something like that. Or not, whoops, not considered probably as intrusive to use something like that. Again, we've got a blue button. Toggle is popover, trigger is hover this time. Placement is, whoops, placement is to the right. Let's change that and put it on top. All right. I toggle in and out. you hover in and out. Well, I guess I should have put it on the bottom because we've got this on top. Otherwise, we'd have to do some styling. So let's change that to bottom. Again, we could have made it left or right as well. Okay. In this case, I guess it might look better almost to the right. And there we go. All right, let me grab this, close that. Never really mentioned this, but these are just, this is the production that I'm doing on these, so. A lot of stuff open here, so let's close a few of these things. OK. 
Okay. That's it for popovers, jumping into scroll spy. Scroll spy is kind of neat because for lack of better words, it's kind of a look ahead. So as mentioned here, the bootstrap scroll spy component allows you to automatically update the nav target based on where you currently are. So here's an example. I'm not gonna look, I'm gonna go down to the bottom here. And if you look, you'll notice I'm at Bast Shoes. But notice when I click Brogan, I jump down to the Brogan section. When I click Calciology, I jump down to that section. All right. So we can use their example that they have here. It's a fairly large example. Let's copy it. Let's put it right in here. And we'll replace our button with all this. Hopefully it'll still work okay. All right, so you can see where we are and you can see if we go down, there's the Brogan section. And if we go down farther, there's the Calciology section. And boom, we jump right to the Calciology. All right. It's funny that it's not showing the active. As it, the active goes to here. It should show where we currently are. But I think that typically with active, sometimes it only just shows one different thing in here. So my guess is if we look in here, it's someplace in here by this one, it says active. Maybe, maybe not. Notice how Scroll Spy requires relative positioning. It says the most commonly it's going to be used with the body element, so you can apply it to that element, but you can apply it literally to just about anything. All right, let's jump into templates. And I believe that once we get done with templates, that is the last lessons, so to speak, out of these 32 lessons. So using a bootstrap template is the quickest way to create a bootstrap website. The following templates use bootstrap for including new components such as cards, tags, etc. So they've got some examples here. What I believe is nice is I think you can click on any of these. It brings it up. You can right mouse click then and choose the view page source and see exactly what's involved in that one. So if you want to use it, you're able to do so. Again, view source code and preview. Another download and preview. Below is an example of how bootstrap templates deal with different screen sizes. I loaded this template, then resized my browser to approximate different device sizes. You can see that the layout automatically responds as I resize my browser. This demonstrates that bootstrap templates can help you get started if responsive website design is important to you. So note the difference when you go to a mobile size, how your nav bar up on the top here basically collapses and you can click there and still open the stuff and normally it opens then down below it. This is going to a single column right here or, or so and how everything has got a more pushed in look. All right, so that's a mobile and that's a tablet. Notice when we get up to a desktop size, see this was one, one uh, column and that's one column. Now it's three columns, all right? There are still a lot of bootstrap three templates, okay? There are bootstrap themes. Bootstrap has released a theme website where you can purchase and download themes with a license that allows you to have unlimited use for the lifetime of the theme. The Bootstrap website also has a number of templates available you can use as the basis for your project. The bottom line is this. There are a boatload of both free, free templates 
that you can use out on the internet and ones that you have to purchase. So for instance, if I come out here and I key in here, free bootstrap for templates. Okay. All free bootstrap themes and templates at startbootstrap.com. Now, the one thing you have to be aware of, so let's say I use this creative, all right? Anybody can use it, so anybody can make theirs look like this. So you can preview it. You can see what it looks like. Notice there's an about, etc. So I can go to services, portfolio, contact, okay? And you can make changes to this. So for instance, you could make these be their own pages. You could change the content that's in here, etc. But it's a great jumping off point or a great place to get started. All right, let's quickly look at Bootstrap 3 versus 4. And after we do that, we'll start looking through some of the code examples that are presented for us. Bootstrap 4 brought some major changes, adding new components, scrapping others. Here's the differences. All right. Bootstrap 3 used less as their CSS preprocessor. What a CSS preprocessor does is it allows you to create your own variables. So you can almost write code in your CSS, for lack of a better word. The less has been replaced with, I think that's a mistake. I thought it was SAS, but it could be CSS. CS, but I thought it was CASS. Maybe I'm wrong. The primary CSS unit is gone here to pixels, from pixels to rems, and I believe, I believe the reason for that is that pixels is more fixed size and rems are a more uh, size that are, that are based on the responsiveness. Media queries are still pixels. The global font size is increased so in other words, if you don't change the global size, it's increased from 14 to 16 pixels. The default fonts, Helvetica New, Helvetica Arial, and Sans Serif, they got rid of Helvetica. Okay. Grids, four-tier system. Now it's a five-tier system. Extra small, small, medium, large, and extra large, which wasn't available in, in three. And also notice... It says Bootstrap 4 has removed the excess from the lowest breakpoint. Offsetting columns, pretty much the same. Tables, inverse tables are now supported. Head styles are now supported. The condensed has gone from table condensed to table small. Remember, these are the Bootstrap 4 here. Bootstrap 3 doesn't use the table prefix. 4 does. For responsive tables in 3, the table responsive class must be added to the parent div. Here it's added to the actual table itself. Reflow tables, don't worry about them. I'm not even sure what they are. You no longer need to save form horizontal in Bootstrap 4 for horizontal forms. 3 did not require the row class. 4 does. 4 is requiring the row class for basically everything you do. The control label from 3 has been replaced with a call form label. Check boxes. We've added the word form to each one of these basically. We've got form control large and form control small. Again, the idea as we're, we're moving on here is for this to be more and more semantic, more intuitive. The help block was used in three. The form text is used in four. The form control classes that are used in four are not available in three. The has feedback that was used in three are no longer used in four. Legend, there's now styling for the column form legend. Custom forms has now is supported in four, which where it was not supported in three. Remember now we've got the secondary buttons. Okay, we dropped the button default class. I think you just don't need to say it. I think you just say BTN. 
The button info class was initially dropped in Bootstrap 4, but now it's back. Sometimes, at least, I believe that that stuff comes back because of, let's just say, audience demand, that they removed it, and some people said, no, we used that, so they brought it back. Outline buttons were not available in 3, they are in 4. The extra small button class, which was available in 3, is not available in 4. The small is, and the large are the only ones, other than the default. Images, we use the image fluid versus the image responsive. The pull right stuff basically, I believe, is not being used anymore. Instead, we use the stuff that's shown here. Oh, we can use the pull stuff. And that'll basically make sure that something aligns in a certain way. For media objects, just use the media class to replace all the ones in four, to replace all the ones that were shown here in three. Drop downs, apply drop downs to lists. Here we can can be built with a list or a div. Menu headers were for LIs. Now they can be for the header tags, which make more sense anyway. Divider has been replaced with drop down vibe divider. Um, you can apply the disabled to an anchor, and I think it still works to an LI just as well. The justify class for button groups not supported in four. The extra small not supported. There is no nav inline class in three. There is one in four. You can now, as it says, with the advent of the navbar nav bar light class, we can have background classes and colors. The alignment is done a little bit differently. The navbar form class has been dropped as it's no longer necessary. The navbar fix top has just become fix top. The navbar fix bottom has just become fix bottom. It's interesting that sometimes they got smaller on the words, but by and large, normally in four, you're getting bigger because you want your terms to be more and more semantic or more and more intuitive to people who look at that. Pagers are not supported in four anymore. Pills, labels, it says, have been replaced by badges in Bootstrap 4. They can use the badge pill. Tags have now been renamed to badges. The Jumbotron Fluid class is not required. Here it introduced the Jumbotron Fluid class for full width. So here we do use it. Progress bars, we use the progress element. It says using it was abandoned in, in 6, now use the div. And we are in alpha 6 is where we are right now. Glyphicons are no longer supported. They're no longer built in. Okay, and this is kind of an interesting one. How Glyphicon support changed with Bootstrap 4. So it says it dropped the, the built-in glyphicons. I I've never looked at octicons, but I've used Font Awesome before. It's very easy to go in and with Font Awesome if you download it, then if you want to use certain, uh, certain icons, okay, you're able to go in then and do so. One font, 675 icons, okay? Bootstrap styles for block quotes were defined by default in three. Here we've got a bootstrap class in four. Header is the page header class supported in three, not in four. Description lists, horizontal lists are now with the row class. Non-responsive usage is not supported in bootstrap four. List groups, okay. It's list group item action as opposed to list group item. Show content, the in has been replaced with, with show, again, more intuitive. 
or more semantic. Cards not supported in four are one of the big things in three. Again, they, they replace panels, wells, and thumbnails. So panels, wells, and thumbnails are gone from four. You use cards instead. Breadcrumbs. You hear you use the breadcrumb against the UL, but now you have to also add the breadcrumb items for the LI. So it may seem like more work, but it ends up being a truer type of way to set things up. Carousel item has replaced the item class and affix is no longer supported. I don't even remember to be honest with you offhand what affix is. So I've now gone through all 32 of these lessons in the tutorial. In addition, I went through the Bootstrap 3 versus Bootstrap 4. In the next set of lessons, I'm going to go through these examples that are here. I'm not going to go through every one because again, look, I just don't have the time nor the desire to go through all these. We'll go through one or two in each one of the groups. Okay, and I'll be back to do that shortly.